Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool pinball video for you this evening. We have been working on this Gottlieb Solar Ride for quite a while now. And if you haven't seen the videos where we repaired it, you might want to go watch those because they were really cool. If I do say so myself. But this video we're going to show a little bit about the game. We're going to check out the instructions, check out the artwork and the play field. And then we're going to play it. Because why would you work so long to fix one and not actually play it, right? So we got this in a few weeks ago from a gentleman who traded it in, said he had owned it a long time, and we have got it up and running again. It's in pretty nice shape, really, um, with the exception of the back glass. But the cabinet is pretty nice. You can see the horse's head peeking uh, through on the back box there. And then down here on the bottom you have the lady riding the horse which fits with the the uh, art on the back glass. Very cool back glass. Cool design on the front. And then of course the same thing on this side. Very good looking game in my opinion. So let's check out that back glass. This thing has, Gottlieb was making some really cool back glasses at this point. In my opinion, just about all of them are really cool, really great. They have this completely mirrored effect going on. So the back glass is basically printed on a mirror. Very 1970s, 1980s rock and roll, right? Remember those little, uh, Y'all remember those little signs you could get that were about, I don't know, 10 by 10 or something like that. And they had like a, a, uh, a band name on it and it was a mirror and you could hang it on your wall. This kind of has that same kind of vibe going on. But it's called Solar Ride and it's dominated by this chick riding a futuristic, I don't know, robotic horse. The, uh, the back glass, I mean, it looks great, but it, it has some flaking areas on it where some of the paint has flaked off. We have cleared it with triple thick to where it won't get any worse, but it's the damage is done, y'all, especially in, like, the blue. So all of these little blue lines on the horse have little flaking spots. But luckily, it's such a busy back glass, and it's got so much going on, and it's just such a strange thing that you're looking at where you don't really even... I mean, you get the gist, obviously, that's a horse, but it's such a artistically done uh, stallion that you don't maybe necessarily notice all of the flaking at first. So it doesn't ruin the back glass or make it look, uh, uh, you know, like it has to be replaced. I'll turn the lights off. You can see it with the lights off. So as you can see, it's very presentable. Uh, just because of the nature of the of the artwork. So this came out in early 1979. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> if you look, it has a 78 copyright, but since it was early 79, the artwork, you know, and everything would have been done in 78. It's a very cool back glass. Now let's check out the play field. A little more, uh, I don't want to say plain. What is the word I'm looking for? I mean, I think it's great, but it's not a, uh, it doesn't have like a, you know, a characters on the play field or anything other than the plastics there. But so, you know, it's more of just kind of typical, kind of a generic uh, artwork look on it. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. So what are we looking at here? I think we're in space and you have some kind of uh, comet here or shooting star or something and the bonus has this really cool round effect. Whenever it counts down, it counts down like that. You know, it just looks great whenever it is actually up and doing its thing. 
Bonus multiplier is a star that's on fire. All right. And uh, a lot of Gottlieb's uh, uh, artwork around this time was similar to this, where they have big blocks that show you the points here and there. If you look on some other machines like this here, that was kind of their thing there for a while. Uh, you have these rollovers that do 500 and add a bonus. As a matter of fact, you have the 500 and add bonus all over the place. That one says 500 and add extra bonus. Whenever you get that one, it gives you three bonuses, right? And this one too. 500 and add extra bonus, but you just lost the ball, fool. This one's 500 and it advances the bonus multiplier, which is different. You know, this is the bonus multiplier. And then you have these drop targets over here, which has a really cool feature. So, you know, this was early in the solid state um, lane. So they were able to do things that would have been pretty hard to do on the EMs, although they probably could have pulled it off. But this one has an interesting little feature where if you knock down on all four of the white drop targets, it makes the red uh, drop target worth the special. So the special, of course, could be set as the a free game or an extra ball. So since this game is for home use pretty much now, uh, after all these years, uh, we have set that up to where you get a free, an extra ball instead of an extra game. But that's kind of neat that they could keep track of the drop targets like that. That could be done before, but it, it would have been really tricky on the EMs because they didn't have the CPU. Uh, you have a saucer over here that kicks the ball out. 5,000 and add extra bonus, so you get three, three bonus steps. And then also it resets the drop targets whenever that's lit. But here's something awesome. This is a great feature to have in a game. If you land in that top hole, you score the bonus. So the ball sits there, and it counts that sucker down and gives it to you. Now the significance of that is usually on most of the games back then, uh, when you drained the ball, it would give you the bonus. So you could only get up, like on this one, up to 20,000, right? But on this one, since you can score the bonus on the play field and keep playing, you can score that 20,000 over and over and over again. Very fun. Little uh, neutron looking <laughs> pop bumper caps uh, with fire around that one. Random stars coming down from somewhere. Oh, okay, I see now. Look at this. So sometimes the more you look at it, the more you see. So there are all these stars coming down through the play field. They go down through the pop bumpers, they start getting bigger. And then the one on the front is the bonus multiplier one. Wow, check that out. All right, over here, nothing much, just a couple stand-ups that give you like 100 points or something. All right, oh, let me show you this since this one's so clean. This is a very clean machine. Now, if you looked on the previous, video, on the previous uh, videos where we did the repairs, on one of them, I was talking about the serial numbers. Look at that. They actually match the certificate on the play field. I didn't notice that at the time, but usually these are all kind of messed up because if somebody sprays Windex or something on them, they get all screwed up, or if they're out in the sun or whatever. But this one's very clean. So it says, manufacturer certificate. This machine is designed and manufactured to be operated exclusively as an amusement device. It is approved for transportation in interstate commerce under section blah, 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 blah. Amended by blah, 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 blah. It is not subject to the federal occupational stamp tax on coin operated devices having been excluded from excluded from sections blah 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 blah, 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 blah. model solar ride solid state serial number 09887 which uh, if you saw the other video is on most of the boards inside of it north lake illinois well, what do you think about that that's pretty cool it also has a thing up here where, depending on which star is lit, uh, it advances the multiply, the bonus multiplier. And then as you roll through the uh, bottom, it's 500 and add bonus. So, of course, the bonus multiplier, meaning when you score the bonus, if you're on 4x, you score the bonus four times. Very cool. Way to make a bunch of points. All right, so let's read the instructions. 
Have I said it yet that if you read the instructions, it makes about any pinball game better? Now, why did I just pull that out? It's because it says five balls per player, and I turned this sucker into a three ball. Bam! I know some people prefer to play them on five ball, and if you buy this one, you can set it right back if you'd like. But for this video, and for my taste, we're going to play it on three ball. All right, points are scored as indicated. So they're basically just saying whatever it says on the play field, blah, blah, blah. Pop bumpers score 1,000 points. So the reason that they mention that is because it doesn't tell you on the play field. It's not indicated. It used to be that it would say on the pop bumper cap, but on this one they went with those cutesy little caps. <laughs> right? Completing the drop targets increases the bonus multiplier. Okay. Extra bonus adds 5 to bonus value. Extra bonus. 500 and add extra bonus. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, we got to pop it back out. So when I was playing it, I was playing it on 5 ball, and it was adding 3. Extra bonus adds three to the bonus value if it's set on five ball. So they always had an out, people. You might have thought you were getting five balls, but really you were getting five crippled balls. So if you're playing on three ball, extra bonus adds five to the bonus value. And of course, they could handle all this with the CPU. Uh, you know, nowadays that would be very easy to do, but back then they were probably doing jumping jacks in the office at Gottlieb that they had figured out how to do that. <laughs> Center drop target lights for special when the other four drop targets are down. And again, that's a very minor thing, but back then that would have been kind of cool for them, you know. Now you got to remember 1979. Think about the other games that had came out by then, though, you know. Uh, so Williams was kind of already starting to change the game. Uh, center uh, return rollover lights for extra ball. When bonus value is 5,000, 10,000, or 15,000. Really? 5,000, 10,000, or 15,000. Okay. So see how this says extra ball when lit? So they're saying that whenever this is on 5,000, 10,000, or 10 and 5, 15,000, that, um, it will light this up. That's an old school EM thing. That would be something that you could do on an EM because it has a, the stepper unit that spins around. If you've seen us work on those, or if you know, I'm sure a lot of you watching this know all about this stuff. But uh, that's an old holdover from the EM days. On the on the EM machines, they would do something like that because it was really easy on that stepper unit to have one of the fingers at a certain place on a rivet so that it made it where the extra ball or whatever was was a. Uh, um, was active at that point and it kind of made it seem like it was a, ran a little bit random whenever it wasn't necessarily but so they're they are that's an example of them almost uh, um, what would be a good way to put it almost crippling their CPU power where they could do anything but yet they're sticking to something that they would have designed into an EM machine you know <laughs> so they're saying they've, they've probably got somebody there that used to have something to do with that coming up with some of the code and, and saying, hey, let's make it where it lights on 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000, because that's how we did it on the EMs, you know. So that's pretty cool. I like that. All right, and then it says, a tilt does not disqualify a player. So, uh, in other words, if you tilt the ball, you don't lose your whole game. Matching the last two numbers in your score to the number that appears on the back glass after the game is over scores one replay. It's very, very cool. Very good looking game, in my opinion. And it's not it's one of these games that, you know, a lot of people have forgotten about and uh wasn't really a big deal where people were really into it. I should mention I should show the plastics too. So you have the girl from the back glass here on the plastics. And then you have the horse from the back glass here on the plastics. 
One thing worth mentioning on these uh, System 1s, this is running the original game board. Uh, it was still in good shape and was fixable. So this is running the original board, uh, literally the original board with the original serial number even on it. But uh, out of this cabinet, not that that matters too much, but it just... It's kind of a sign that you know the game's been taken care of. It's still got the same boards in it from original, most of them. <laughs> uh, but uh, be because of that, it was that original board. It did not have a lot of CPU power. So things like an attract mode where you make lights come on. Nope, nothing like that. They had not. They had not programmed anything like that. They had a little prom that carried the code. I don't know if it was an issue where the code wasn't, uh, the storage wasn't large enough where they could do that, or if they just hadn't done it yet because they were, you know, Gottlieb was the last ones to, to switch over, the last ones that wanted to switch over, because they were doing their, uh, uh, well, I guess they were the last to switch over too, but because they were doing their, uh, their, their EMs were just, they loved those things, and they were making them a lot of money. They kind of owned the market on that there towards the end, although there were good Williams and Bally. EMs too. It's got a Bally one right here from late in the game, right before they switched over to solid state. Okay, so I'm going to set up the tripod and we're going to play it a little bit. It's got the beep boop board in it, so I'll let you see what the beep boop board is all about. All right, folks, we're going to play it a little bit and see what happens. I'll tell you the score since you can't see it. Boy, I'm doing great so far. New world record. Yeah. I did that on purpose. Whoop. bonus <laughs> great give it a bonus oh they got me they got me all right, I got 60,620 first ball. That's pretty good, isn't it? It has interesting action up there at the top. So remember this extra ball when lit lights up when this is on 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000. So that's something to watch for. I kind of want to get an extra ball. The other way you can get an extra ball is we've set the special on extra ball. So if I get the four white ones and then the red one, I get extra ball. Look how when it when it so this the CPU is doing all this, but look how when it goes through five, like if it's going from four to eight or something, or four to nine, when it does that, as it passes five, the extra ball lights up for a second. So for those of you out there that program and things, you know, like if you did that now, that would be completely unnecessary. But back then everything was so simple, they literally were programming it like it was an EM pinball machine. On an EM it would do that because the wiper would go over the rivet. some interesting action up at the top because it can go back around it can go through the gate like there's some interesting stuff that happens at the top and then you have that bonus collector up there on the right I mean up there on the left that one. Oh, come on come on all right so I got a hundred and six thousand six hundred and eighty
Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Boy, that was a dud. Well, that's a cool shot. Okay, so look, we're on five. And the extra ball is lit. Glunk, glunk, glunk. Oh. So did y'all ever hear about the, the plunge shot that changed the world? <laughs> so back in the day, they were using pinball machines to gamble on, right? And so if they were a game of chance, that was considered illegal because you're you're basically it can be rigged. But if it's a game of skill, the better you are, the more you can win, you know, points on the game or you know, if they were using them for gambling or whatever. So they in New York, I believe it was New York, basically they were having no pinball machines. They were getting rid of all of them. They were they were not going to allow pinball machines. And the pinball people kept insisting that it was a game of skill. And so the the guy in charge, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, they kept insisting that it was a game of chance, and so therefore it would be illegal. And so the pinball, one of the companies or whatever, you know, I always get the gist of the story right. I'm sure some of the facts are wrong. But one of the one of the uh, companies involved or whatever uh, told the people that they had a guy that could prove it was a game of skill, and so they got, they brought some guy in. And the way he proved it was on the on the skill shot, the skill shot. So if you're if you have enough skill, you can plunge this ball and it'll land in that drop target up there that's lit. I mean the the rollover lane that's lit, right? And so the guy had one shot to save basically the future of pinball in that area in New York, I think it was. And so the guy walks up to the machine. When it counts down, it doesn't light the the uh, extra ball when lit. Interesting the way they program some of these. What in the world? get more than three balls that time what was that all about is it is it tripping or am I tripping ball one I hate that part right there where there's no stand-up switch Ooh, I might be able to do it Oh, damn. <laughs> so I was, I had just the red one and the top one. Ball two. See right there? There should be a switch. So do you understand now why they call it the beep boop board? <laughs> so we're still on ball two. And I keep making that shot where you get a bunch of bonus. Lots and lots of bonus. I would like to collect said bonus. Ooh, that lost it. Ooh. Yeah, giving him points. Ooh, okay, can I do it? Missed. <laughs> Missed. 
Oh, come on. Come on. Bar three. That's how many uh, licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Roll, of a Tootsie Pop. Three. That lost it. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, we're back on five ball. Have we been on five ball the whole time? Or is the dip switch just tripping? Alright, it's on five ball. I'm gonna turn the dip switch off and back on. It must be stuck or doesn't like it. So I haven't mentioned in a while. Whenever I'm playing these, I'm not playing them because I'm some great pinball player or something. I'm playing them because I'm testing them. So we just literally got done finishing this one. So I set it on three ball. And I think it played the first couple games on three ball, but then it went back to five ball. So there's a little on, on these uh, system ones, they use dip switches for stuff like that. Um, so it could be that the dip switch on is three ball, off is five ball. So the switch being on could have been dirty, like it's not making good contact. So I turned it off and on several times. And we'll see if I fixed it. Ball two. Oh, you know how we can tell? There is a way we can tell. I think I just did tell. So our bonus is on 1,000. If you see it go up 5, then it must be on 3 ball. If you see it go up 3, it must be on 5 ball. Or we could just wait till the end of this ball. Yeah, I went up five. Yeah, that's right. We must be on three ball. Love it when a beautiful plan comes together. Did you see how they go oh, about scissored it? Don't scissor it, people. I mean, unless that's your thing. But All right, we're on three ball again. Just like it ought to be. So now we'll... uh play a few more games just to make sure it doesn't fall out of three ball again. I had 96,800 points that time. Mm, it didn't give me the... It didn't give me it when I rolled up the left rollover. Ooh. Okay. Another thing I thought was interesting. It looks like, so if this white light lights up, or this white light, it says resets drop targets. But that only lights up when they're all down, so that's kind of weird. <laughs> and it's not like there's any other way to do it. So it's not really an award that you win. It's just if you, uh, hmm, I guess it makes sense. So if you drop all of them, you have to go hit that one of those two saucers to uh, reset them all. Oh, I scissored it. Mm. That's a damn shame. Ball three. In general, these System 1 flippers were nice and strong. There is no problem with the flippers on these. I've, I've never had one, really, I don't think, that had uh, weak flippers. There's not much you need to do to them. 
I put new sleeves on them and they are like whacking the back of the play field. So I mean it's they're completely fine. All right, so my high score so far is 106,000, which I have now set on the back glass in all four positions it says 106,000. I want to get the extra ball to prove that that works to myself, not necessarily y'all. I want to do the I want to do the drop target one. That's that was that's a really cool idea, I think. <laughs> I keep missing it. Ah, I scissored it again. Arr! Yeah, so I want to knock down the four white drop targets. That's what I really want to do. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Damn it. <laughs> All right. So that was the worst scoring game I've done yet. We're going to have to do better now. I think this is the one, people. I think this is the one. Let's get those points up there. What do you think? Oh, so now it's mocking me. Damn. Did you see that? Hmm. Don't do it. Oh, it took it away. <laughs> Let's just get crazy with it. Another thing about these Gottlieb's is that they, they usually the play field is in better shape than the Williams or the Bally's, which I think it's because they were done a little better, but it could just be that they weren't played as much. But uh, whenever you get a whenever you get a uh, an early Bally, a lot of times you get severe wear on the play field where they just wore the hell out of that thing. Um, but these are always in pretty decent shape. There is some wear where the kick out hole is on the right. That saucer up there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. Okay, that ain't gonna work like that. Ah, come on. They took it from me. You might be able to get a bounce back on this, too. It bounced up high enough. I might have been able to hit it again. Okay, I have set a new high score. 127,000. And that was on three ball. Yeah, see, it just bounced back. Ooh, barely. Damn it. Mm. <laughs> Come on. How is the how is the game cheating me? I don't understand. How's that even possible? You'd think since it's a computer, it couldn't possibly cheat me because of the nature of the game, but yet here we are. And I can't make that damn plunge shot to save my life lately. The pop bumper might be right in the damn way, too. Now that I think about it. All right, so I got 31,000 that ball. We're going to have to do better than that, people. Those are rookie numbers. Don't come down here. 
get back up there where you belong. Mm. They got me again. Maybe I should be working the bonus multiplier. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so we have 69,000 at the beginning of ball three. This is very possible, people. <laughs> I would only score 2,000 points, but... Oh. Alright, that's 82,000. We're going to play one last game. Solamente uno mas. I can't speak Spanish. That's just a little Spanish lingo for you. Alright, that's good. Looking good, people. Looking good. I like stuff like that. Oh! Oh, and I finally made the plunge shot. And then scored the bonus with the two X on. Give me that double. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that double. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. So I got sixty-five thousand on the first ball. This could be the one. <laughs> this could be the greatest game of all time. did it again well those pops are pretty nice really huh. there went my red one didn't really want to lose that red one Go back on out there. Mm. Okay, here's my bonus though. All right, 112,000. Beginning the ball three. Unless I completely screw this up, I might break my record. Mm. All right, I did break my record. I got a measly 129,000, but hey, I'm going to take it. Works for me. I think that's pretty good. So there you have it. That is Gottlieb's Solar Ride. Gottlieb, Gottlieb. Look, I say Gottlieb because I'm Southern. We talk with a drawl. A lot of the things I say, I kind of round off. I know it's Gottlieb, but I don't say E's like that. I do not pronounce my E's in that way. So if I am reading Gottlieb, I'm going to say Gottlieb. That's how I say it. So you're just going to have to get over it, people. Get over it. It will forever be Gottlieb to me. If it's good enough for Randy Travis to talk like that, it's good enough for me. Very cool game. Very fun, in my opinion. But, you know, okay, so we need to talk about this. Obviously, this is nowhere near as fun as like a brand new pinball machine, right? Obviously. So this, you can't compare this to an $8,000 brand new Jersey Jack pinball machine. That's just, what kind of moron would do that, <laughs> right? You can't, you can't go ride a 57 Chevy and then say, well, I don't know, well, my Lexus is nicer than this. No, your Lexus is a piece of crap compared to that. This thing's a piece of, it's classic, right? Now, I'm not saying, a, of course, a Jersey Jack pinball machine wouldn't be a piece of crap, but my whole point is they're all cool, man. We don't need to, we don't need to dog on the old machines. I have a lot of fun playing it. I guess maybe some people don't, though. So if you don't enjoy it, what the hell are you watching this video for? But uh, I love these old ones like this, and I, I like the Gottlieb's because they, I think the reason I like them is just because they tried so hard and they just didn't, they, they were nowhere, you know, they never made it like the Bally and the, the uh, Williams games. Of course, I like them too, but these just have a special place in my heart. 
Uh, and you can get them cheaper usually. So usually you can buy one of these nice and cheap. And then, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, the, the, the original board was a disaster. The, it was flawed from the beginning. Well, maybe, but maybe not. This one's still working. Knock on wood. But if it ever does break, I mean, there's a brand new board you can buy for it for 200 bucks and now it works again. So, you know, back in the day, though, I'm sure it was a big problem if you fried one of those uh, spider chips and then they, whenever you called, they told you it'd be 80 bucks for a new one or something. That probably was a little upsetting. But uh, I, I really like them. Once, once you've gone through them, you've worked on that power supply, you've worked on those connectors, you've got made sure those diodes are on that driver board, this thing will sit and purr. The displays hardly ever go bad. So see, that, that's, that's, a, that's a great example, okay? So everybody bitches that the, the, the main CPU screws up, right? But they never mention that the displays never screw up. So the displays cost what the CPU would cost. It's just, it's an old game. They have problems, you know? The, the old Williams games have problems. The old Bally games have problems. And I think you could probably argue... I, I'm going to put this out there, and then y'all can fact check me if you'd like. Okay? Let's take this game, a 1979 Gottlieb Solar Ride. I've fixed the power supply. It has the diodes on the uh, driver board, right? Let's take this game, and it's ready to go. So we're going to sit it here. Now let's take a let's take a Matahari, a Bally Matahari, original board. Uh, that doesn't have da battery damage. You saw this one had a minor battery damage if you watch the repair videos, but not a lot. So a Bally in kind of the same the same condition with the original displays, right? Uh, original rebuilt power supply. Everything's been serviced, and let's set it up next to it, and then let's set up the uh, let's set up a Williams Flash next to that. So a, a Williams System Six Flash from right around the same time. Original power supply, but it's been rebuilt. Original displays, uh, but the, the the display driver board has been rebuilt because you know those have problems. Uh, the original CPU has been rebuilt. The battery's been removed off of it. Minor battery damage like this one has. Uh, the original the original uh, driver board. Okay, which one which one is going to give you the least amount of trouble? I think you honestly have to say the Gottlieb. It's gonna it's gonna give you the least amount of trouble. That's just my opinion, but, you know. Now, the, the Williams, if it gives you any trouble, it can be fixed and it won't cost much. The Bally, if it gives you any trouble, it can be fixed and it won't cost much. But those displays are going to burn up. The displays on the Williams are going to burn up, right? And these displays are going to sit here and keep on working because they operate at a lower voltage. So you can't, you know, whenever people are overly critical on these, I always go, eh, you could really say that about any of them. Now, if you want to complain about the playability, like the fun of it, that's a subjective thing. You might just not like these and not think that they're fun, which is fine. They are, a lot of them are very simple. But if you've played something like Genie, it's kind of fun, right? If you've played Black Hole, it's not a System 1, but it's pretty damn fun. So they had their, they had their games too. I like, I just like all of them, but... Uh, these Gottlieb's have gotten a bad name over the years, and in my opinion, it's unwarranted. So leave your opinion below. Tell us what you think. I'll try not to ban you if I don't agree with you. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, by the time you see this solar ride, it may have galloped off to someone else's game room. We may not even have it available for sale anymore. So uh, we're not necessarily trying to sell you this game. We're just trying to take a cool video of it and have fun playing it and show everybody what the things used to look like as of 2020. You got to keep in mind this thing's over 40 years old and with a little bit of work and very little money. We didn't spend much on repairing it, but with a little bit of work going through it, we've got it up and running and playing good. It's fun. Still doing its thing. Um, so uh, that is very cool. But, uh, but we're, so we're not trying to like, you know, necessarily sell it to you. Probably by the time you see this video, it may not even be available for sale anymore. People buy these pretty quick. We're just trying to record some kind of evidence of how these things used to play and used to look when they were 41 years old. Hmm, very cool. So, but if you do want to buy something, go check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Now, if uh, 
if you're local, you can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, and we have a building here full of arcade games, a few pinball machines usually, uh, maybe a jukebox or two every once in a while, but mainly arcade games. But we've got, we've got a building here full of those. We also sell classic video, uh, vintage video games like Nintendo and Sega stuff, PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, so you can come by and see that. If you're local, we're in downtown Rock Hill, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte. And look how that looks on the camera. It doesn't look like that in person because your eye can't see the strobe, but the camera catches it. That is trippy. Trippy. That's how it looks in person. Um, so come by and see us if you can. If you can't, that's cool too. Just subscribe to us here. And every time we get one of these done, we film little videos and stuff and have a good time. Hopefully everybody enjoys it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And make sure to give us a thumbs up. Hey, for taking the trouble to film it for you. We also have a link to Amazon down below. Amazon, everybody uses Amazon, or a lot of people do. So if you do use Amazon, and I think you have to be in the United States, which sucks because it leaves all of our overseas people out on this particular thing. And uh, we have a ton of people that watch us from overseas. But uh, if you uh, go to that Amazon link whenever you're going to Amazon... Some people have suggested you could bookmark it. You can if you want, but if you if you click that link, you go to Amazon and everything is the same price as it normally would be. It's just our URL is in the in the title. I mean, up in the top. If you look in the URL, our little identifier is up there. And so anything you buy on Amazon, whether it's a rubber ring for your flipper, <laughs> that damn flipper. When we got this, these two were the right ones. The Gottlieb ones are slightly different. This one was, was the wrong one, so we had to replace it. We had to drill the thing off the machine. Oh, God, if it was a Williams, we never would have had to do that. But anyway, if you go to Amazon and you're going to buy just a flipper rubber, or you're going to buy a new car, it gives us a percentage of Amazon's profit because we sent you there as an advertising royalty. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. It's kind of cool. It doesn't tell us who's doing it or anybody's names or addresses or any of that stuff. But it does tell us what people buy. So people are buying some cool stuff. Somebody uh, uh, earlier was on there buying uh, tools like little uh, uh, Allen wrenches and just little little stuff like that. That's very cool because, you know, it gives us a little piece of that. But not from you because we don't want to make our dear viewers pay for anything. We know you all work hard for your money and you ain't got time to waste it on frivolous stuff like pinball repair videos right but uh if you use that link amazon gives us some of their money and we love taking their money so we appreciate that folks so leave your comments below let us know what you think about this thing and what you think about the reliability of these versus the bali matahari versus the williams flash that we have here in our heads sitting next to it by the way i wish i had both of those in that would be a hell of a video wouldn't it i could just walk around like this and show them like just imagine if we were looking at this and a matahari awesome game next to it and a flash great game next to it mm. maybe some other time so we appreciate you hanging out with us tonight leave your comments below and we will see you on the next video this is gotlib solar ride